That's the fastest I've ever clocked someone. So we're back in 2013 and uh, me and my uh, roommates at the time decided to go out for a drink at a place called Belcourt Taps. And so uh, our schedules are flexible. We want to kind of get into something new. And Jason, he blurts out, hey, let's start a business together, right? And that's how, you know, all great companies start over over, over a drink, right? You know, I, I chime in completely facetiously. I say, uh, hey, let's start an exotic car rental company. You know, I don't think there's, I don't even think this is a business model at the time because uh, I, I know a little bit about cars and how they depreciate and you wouldn't want to let average people drive in nice cars, right? So they get all excited. Yeah, let's let's do it. I Google exotic car rental companies and I see they're all in all the major cities, Atlanta, Dallas, Miami, Vegas, and it's it seems like a business model. Next thing you know, put together the plan, we get some investors, and within four or five months, we are open for business. It all started for me with a uh, bright yellow Lamborghini Diablo on my bedroom wall as a child. And I just have always loved cars, so that's what sparked the idea. So we start with four exotic cars. Uh, we buy a Ferrari California, a Lamborghini Gallardo, a Rolls Royce Ghost, and a Ferrari F430, three of which we bought from Ed Bullion himself uh, in Atlanta. And uh, we go down, get the cars, bring them back. It's all exciting. So we open up for business. We're already on the front page of the newspapers. This is a new concept in town. Nashville's never seen anything like this. We decide we open up in December. This is a terrible, absolutely terrible idea to open up an exotic car rental company uh, in December. So lesson learned, right? So we decided to wait till spring to do the public grand opening. So things are building up and getting, you know, we're super excited. On the day of our grand opening, one of our buddies, his name is Ventran, he bought a bright orange Lamborghini Murcielago from Ed Bullion himself. Brought it up to the uh, to the showroom on the day of the grand opening. And uh, it's one of my all time favorite dream cars. You know, I decide literally two hours prior to the celebration of the grand opening that I want to take it first, an innocent spin. I grab the keys, I'm, I'm out on, uh, on 440, you know, just, it's like 4.30 p.m. It's rush hour traffic. I'm thinking, I'm never gonna get a chance to get on it, right? Like, I'm constantly being stuck and people are always getting in my way. So imagine the frustration, just building and building and building. Well, finally, just glorious moment of just open lane, left lane open. I'm coming down towards the uh, Murphy Road West End on uh, in Nashville. So this is my chance. I punch it. V12 is roaring. 100, 110. I'm climbing. I'm up at 120, 130. Right as I'm hitting my top speed, as I'm going under the bridge towards West End, there's a bike cop underneath the bridge. So I'll never forget it. I blow by him. I see his radar gun actually drop to the ground in my rearview mirror as I'm slamming the brakes. He almost dropped his bike. He uh, he leaned all the way over and barely got it back up. So I see him take off after me. At this point, I'm way ahead. I'm taking the Hillsboro Pike exit, which was the next exit. I get on the ramp, and of course, it's rush hour. The Green Hills Mall traffic has started, and I'm stuck, and I'm like, I'm screwed for sure, right? Well, I look down, and he blows right by the intersection. He completely misses the ramp, and somehow he missed this, this is bright orange Lamborghini, right? So he goes by the ramp. I think I'm free. I get passed up heading towards Lombardi, right? I'm stuck at the stoplight again at Lombardi and Hillsborough Pike, and I see the bike from a distance. He can't see me at this point, but I see him from a distance. I see him coming back up the, the opposite ramp to come and find me. So at this point, the adrenaline's kicking. I'm like, let's try to get away. And the Lamborghini Mercy Law is a very wide vehicle. One of Lamborghini's widest cars, the V12. Well, I narrowly split between, in two lanes, I split two cars. I run the red light. I fly up the hill, try to get away. And of course, Woodmont Boulevard and Hillsboro Pike is the next intersection. And uh, I'm stuck again. There's nowhere to go. I'm not splitting cars at this these tight lanes up here. So I actually go off a little bit on the shoulder, go around all these cars, blow right through the well, Woodmont Boulevard intersection, the red light, of course. And uh, I see Woodmont Baptist Church on the right. <clears throat> so I'm thinking, perfect place to hide. Let's go camp out behind the church, right? I turn right. On Woodmont. Well, as I'm pulling behind Woodmont Baptist Church, I see the bike cop flying through the intersection, and he must have saw my tail end. And I, I could tell he he turned where I turned. He he saw me pulling behind the church. So at this point, he would know if I left there. I would I was evading. So I'm just sitting there as nervous as can be. I'm shaking. I'm like, this is the day of our grand opening, right? I'm gonna the president and founder of the company is gonna be in jail on the day of our grand opening. And this is just gonna be one of my parents are in town. We got 
probably a hundred VIPs at the party. It's just, it's a dream come true to, to start a business and, and have some fun, right? I wait one minute for him to park and walk towards me. It was an eternity, but I'm sitting there shaking. He, get, he gets off the bike. He's already holding his handcuffs and they're dang, he dangles them for me to see as he's walking up towards me. He's like, you almost got me killed. I mean, he's screaming and he's very, he's fuming, right? And so, and then eventually he's like, why aren't you going to say something? And um, I got nothing to say in my head. Like, you know, be polite, be courteous. Don't try to make a bunch of excuses, right? You know, just try to shoot him straight. And at this point, I think he, you know, he saw me evade, right? Well, he didn't bring that up. He just kept saying, oh, you almost got me killed. That's the fastest I've ever clocked someone. He said, congratulations, sir. And I'm like, oh, thanks, right? He didn't bring up the evading part. So I'm thinking maybe I have a chance here. And I just kind of half grin like, well, how fast was it? And he said, you know, I'm knowing I went about close to 150. He said 135. And so that made me laugh a little bit. I kind of grinned and like, haha, you know, like he didn't quite clock me at the top speed, right? That kind of boosted my confidence a little bit. I'm like, well... Hey, that's exactly, he clocked me at 135 and a 45. That's exactly three times the speed limit. I did the quick math in my head. And made, he kind of had a half grin. And at that point, I'm like, let's try to bounce strong out of this. We chat. I told him, hey, this is a big day for us. It's the day of our grand opening. I really didn't want to go to jail on that day. I even offered the Lamborghini uh, Mercy Lago. I said, you can have it for an entire week, no charge. Just please don't take me to jail. And he laughed and said, ah, I don't I don't like, he it was not a car guy. He he said, I do not like cars. No, thank you. He politely declined the offer, but things start to shift a little bit. He eventually says, oh, you're, you're, you're not a douchebag like I thought you were. We chat for a few minutes and uh, next thing you know, he's like, look, man, I'm going to write you a nasty ticket, uh, but I'm going to take off reckless endangerment. Obviously, he never saw me evade him, and he writes me a ticket for 135 and a 45. I go my merry way. I make it back to the showroom, waited a couple weeks to share the story with my friends, but... Little did they know that I barely made it back for our grand opening. I ended up going to driving school and a couple days in driving school and it's completely off my record, never affected my insurance premiums. And uh, definitely uh, consider myself very lucky. Whether you're packing for a cannonball or just going about your day, it's important to just carry what you actually need. The Ridge has a line of wallets and bags that help you to do just that. Leave the junk at home and just make sure that you've always got exactly what you need with you. So be sure to check out ridge.com slash Venwicky and use the code Venwicky at checkout for a discount to let them know how much you appreciate their support of the Venwicky channel.